Hello, this is Ray Main here again with today's Bible reading. Today we're going to be reading in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14. Now I might say before we get started that this chapter uh, is a very controversial chapter. In the Bible, there's a lot of people have misrepresented this chapter to back up the doctrines that they might have on speaking in tongues. Uh, I happen to believe in speaking in tongues. Some people don't. There is a scripture that, you know, uh, in the book of Acts that talks about, if you remember, that talks about whenever the Holy Ghost fell on the people back there, said they all spoke with tongues. Uh, so that is, there's a lot of people that are preaching today that whenever you get saved, you so to speak shake the preacher's hand, I believe in Jesus, you're filled with the Holy Ghost right there. That happens sometimes, but I'm going to tell you, it's with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Do you remember when Peter went down to the house of Cornelius and the Holy Ghost fell on him? Uh, how did he know that the Holy Ghost fell on him? It's because they all spake with tongues. So tongues is a very real deal. There's another scripture that I might add just in passing that says uh, that uh, there, everything can be forgiven of man except blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. Part of blaspheming against the Holy Ghost, there's a lot of different uh, thoughts there as well, but part of blaspheming against the Holy Ghost is to deny it. Okay? Now, in talking about tongues, the speaking of tongues, there is a known tongue and an unknown tongue. Well, what's the difference, you might say? A known tongue, how many, how many languages do you suppose that there are in this world? There are probably hundreds, aren't there? A known tongue would be one of those languages. Now, it may not be known to you, but if it's a known tongue, then it's, it's known to someone. Okay. An unknown tongue is what we classify as a heavenly language. In other words, that you, uh, you're you just talking to God yourself. Your spirit is talking to God in that heavenly language or a unknown tongue. Now, there's a reason for a known tongue. There's a reason for an unknown tongue. And this scripture, this, this uh, forgive me, this chapter uh, tries to lay out the reasons for those and if I if I catch it as we read well I'll try to explain a little bit further but pay attention to where it talks about a known tongue and an unknown tongue okay verse 1 follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts but rather that you may prophesy for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God for no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongue, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Now, now, a lot of the church world has taken these few scriptures right here and banned tongues. Uh, that's a work of the devil. The, the old uh, Baptists uh, years and years ago, I don't know how they are now, but years and years ago, they thought that whenever someone started speaking in tongues, that was a sign of the devil. Well... We're going to have to throw out some parts of the Bible if that's so, okay? Let's go on. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? And even things without life-giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? In other words, just so much noise. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, 
and none of them is without signification. That's talking about all of the different languages that are in the world. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaking that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. In other words, they won't be able to understand each other. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. In other words, if you don't know what you're saying, nobody else knows what you're saying, what good is it? Okay? Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks? In other words, amen, or it is so. It is so is what amen means. How can he say, it is so at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? For thou verily gavest thanks well, but the others not edified. See, what he's saying here is, is that, you know, we're, whenever we're speaking in tongues, we're edifying ourselves. But if there's no interpretation, if there's no way for the other person that's there with you to understand what you said, then they're not edified. And what Paul is saying is that it's better, that, you know, you're edifying yourself, but it's better if we edify our brothers and sisters, okay? I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. See, he's not forbidding it. Yet in the church, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. If, therefore, the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so, falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of truth. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. That's the main point of this chapter. Paul is saying we need to edify the church. Well, who are the church? That's the people that's in the church. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, now this is talking about an unknown tongue, okay? But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak, two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. 
let me re uh, uh, repeat a little story, a testimony that I heard several years ago. There was a lady that uh, was singing a song uh, at church, and several people were there. It was at a revival, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon her, and she began to speak with tongues. And it just so happened that there was a Japanese lady sitting in the back of the house that didn't, the way I understood it, didn't really believe. She just came with some other folks that were coming to church anyway. This lady that was singing the song, she began to speak with tongues. And the Japanese lady started crying after church. And, and she was praising God. And after church, she came up to the lady that was singing the song and she said, where did you learn to speak Japanese? The Japanese language. See, that's a known tongue, right? It's a known tongue. And she asked this lady that lived here in the United States all of her life, she said, where did you learn to speak Japanese? And she said, I don't speak Japanese. She said, whenever you were singing and you began, all of a sudden you began talking in Japanese and said it was the high dialect, in other words, the royal dialect of the Japanese people. Uh, and she said, I haven't heard that since I was a child. And she began crying, and as a result of that, she became saved. She gave her heart to the Lord. So any of you that that uh, believe that there's no such thing, that, that have been taught that this is of the devil, uh, there's a lot of people who have went off the ditch on the other side of the road. See, I'm searching for the, the middle of the road. Uh, my uh, father in the Lord used to teach that, you know, there's a middle of the road with a ditch on either side, and it's easy to get in, in the ditch on either side. Well, on the other side of that, there's a lot of people that think that just da -da 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 that that's speaking in tongues. It's not. That's just babbling is all that is. There are scriptures talking about the babblers as well. Uh, but I can tell you from personal testimony that there is something about the Holy Ghost, something about that comforter that was sent back here by Jesus, which is the Spirit of God, that came and, and took his place in my life, and it's available for you as well, that will give you peace over the things that are bothering you, that will help you to understand the things that are going on. It's almost impossible, it's my belief, to understand exactly what God means by his word that we're going through this process of reading, trying to explain it in my poor way. Uh, it's difficult, if not impossible, to understand the Word of God without the Holy Ghost. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you receive the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues. So, Paul said here, covet to prophesy. In other words, uh, covet that you might preach to people, that you might be able to share the gospel with them, but to forbid not to speak with tongues. Just because you don't understand doesn't mean it's not real. If you don't understand, pray for that understanding that I'm talking about. Okay? God bless you. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a blessed day.